Today on The Brighter Day, Donald Harrick is perplexed by his sister-in-law, Lydia. Lydia, you're in a rather unusual mood this morning. Am I? Yes, you seem so cool and collected. Quite a change from all your recent hysterics. Yes, Donald. I've made up my mind. I must always listen to you. That's more like it. The Brighter Day. Transcribed, written by John Haggard. Mary Margaret McBride. You know, I started baking way back on the farm. And I always used to think that you couldn't make really good cake without a lot of fuss. But now I know you can. Because there's a new kind of cake mix. Instant swan's down cake mix. And it turns out the best tasting cake you ever ate. When you try it for yourself, if your very first cake isn't the best tasting ever, you'll get three times your money back for the empty package. Imagine, three times your money back. It's your personal guarantee that the new instant swans down cake mixes make the best tasting cakes. Cakes so homemade good you'd never believe they were made with a cake mix. And instant swans down cake mixes are a double blessing because they're really instant. So easy that ordinary mixes seem like hard work. You can even mix the batter with a spoon. And right now you can get instant swans down cake mixes at an extra low price. I hope you'll try the new instant swans down cake mixes. Lydia Harrick has been impatiently waiting for her brother-in-law, Donald, to help her return the silver clock, as he has promised he would at the right moment. But oddly, the right moment, according to Donald, hasn't yet arrived. And to make the situation more unbearable for Lydia... She has learned that the unthinking Sally Eldridge has made up her mind exactly who took the silver clock from the Dennis house. And this news is spreading about the town. For example, right now, Patty Hamilton is sweeping her front doorstep when she is accosted by an unwelcome visitor. Why, Patty Hamilton! Oh, good morning, Mrs. Washburn. Whatever are you doing home at this hour of the day? I'm doing my housework, as you can see. Oh, well, really... Don't tell me your doctor husband is closing his office for the summer. Why, of course not. Oh, what a charming little place. You know, I haven't been inside, not since you and Dr. Hamilton moved in. Yes, well, it's small, but it suits us. Oh, it's a sweet little house for two or... Oh, stupid, of course. It'll be three before long. When, when will the baby be coming, Patty? In October. Oh, Really? Oh, that's why you stopped working, isn't it? (laughs) Far be it for me to pry into anyone's economics, but you did take that job in your husband's office as, well, to sort of meet expenses, didn't you? Yes, I did. Well, then, whatever is he going to do then without you? Oh, Randy can manage for a while until he finds someone else. Then his practice is doing all right? Oh, yes, it is. I think he's going to be one of the most successful doctors New Hope has ever had. Well, I certainly hope so, Patty, for your sake. I, um, I suppose you're holding it against me because we switched back to Dr. Fletcher. But you understand, Patty. He's older and, to my family, more reliable. Not that I, I mean to cast any aspersions on your husband. No, I'm sure you don't, Mrs. Washburn. But after all, he's young. When he's as old as Sam Fletcher, people will rely on him, too. I'm confident they'll rely on him long before that. He's had excellent training. <laughs> and you've, uh, you've done wonders with his living room, Patty. Uh, but I suppose with the baby coming, you'll want to move into one of those cottages by the lake. Have you seen the one that Axel Bark rented to Sandra and Grayling? Yes. I must get around to seeing it right away. Well, since they're away on their honeymoon, I think it's locked up, Mrs. Washburn. Oh. Oh, and and by the way, that reminds me. Everybody's talking about the silver clock that Reverend Dennis gave them for a wedding present. What a tempest that stirred up. Why a tempest? It's very definitely a family matter. Well, I guess you haven't heard the talk. 
Sally Eldridge, for instance, is just positively up in arms, as we all are, that such a treasured gift just disappeared right from the wedding gift table, right from our beloved minister's home. Yes, well, of course, I can understand how everybody feels, but it's still our problem. No doubt it'll turn up. Well, that remains to be seen. Certainly puts the reverend in an awkward position, doesn't it? Why awkward? Well, being a minister, he doesn't want to point an accusing finger at anyone. And he probably has a pretty good idea who took it. My father has no idea whatsoever. We're not even sure it was taken. Maybe it was misplaced. We'll just go on looking for it, that's all. Well, we're pretty sure that it was that young scamp, Skip Garrett. Oh, no. No, not Skip. Certainly not. Well, just think it over carefully now. Look, he was right there, buzzing around the wedding gift table. Everybody saw him. Well, excuse me a minute. Well, certainly. Hello? Oh, Lydia. Yes. Well, well, I imagine Randy is still at the hospital making his rounds. Yes, I've quit my job. That's why no one answered at the office. No, no, nothing's the matter with me. I... I just heard something a, a little unbelievable. We'll hear more about this in a moment. But first... Mayor Margaret McBride again. Just want to remind you to try those wonderful new instant swans down cake mixes because they make the best tasting cakes ever. In fact, unless your very first cake is best tasting, you get three times your money back for the empty package. So you certainly must try the new instant swans down white cake, yellow cake, and devil's food mixes. I know you will tell me they all make sensational cakes. Yes, and you will thank me for suggesting instant swans down cake mixes. It's nothing important at the moment, Lydia. Just some, well, what I think is idle, vicious gossip. But we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, I, I know Randy was planning to be at the hospital for a while, but he'll be going back to the office. If, if he checks with me before I meet him tonight uh, at supper, uh, for supper at Papa's, can I give him any message? Um, no, and no thanks, Patty. I'll, uh, I'll try him later. Well, do that, Lydia, because you might just catch him. And, and look, stranger, I hope I'll be seeing you soon. Yes, y- yes, I'd like that, Pat, very soon. Goodbye. Lydia? Uh, yes, Donald. Well, I'll be uh, going out to the construction office now. Oh, you're leaving? Yes, sir. You, uh, you worked later than usual, didn't you? Yes, I had a batch of correspondence to get out to the Boston office. Well, have a good day, Donald. Mm-hmm. The sooner you get through with the youth center, the sooner you can go back to Boston. Well, you know, you're in a rather unusual mood this morning. Am I? Yes, you're so cool and collected. Quite a change from your sobs and hysterics. Well, just trying to take your advice, Donald, will take a leaf out of your book. Oh? Yes. I made up my mind during the night that I must always listen to you. Well... <laughs> That's more like it. Really is. Believe me, look, that silver clock on the bottom of my dresser isn't going to give you one bit more trouble. Well, I can't say that exactly, but I guess the only thing to do is to be calm about it. Like (laughs) you are, Donald. I'm so glad to see that you're getting wise. I'm glad to see that you've got hold of yourself. Well, I'll see you at dinner time, and tonight I'll look forward to it. It'll be so nice to have my... Smiling, poised Lydia sitting opposite me. Yes, Donald. Goodbye. Bye. Operator, would you give me the New Hope Hospital, please? Thank you. Hello? Is this the hospital? Could you tell me if Dr. Randy Hamilton is still there? Oh, he's already left. He he didn't say where he was going. No. No, thank you. No message. I'll I'll try him later. Bye. Well, I can't wait for Donald to help me. Got 
to get that clock out of his room. Poor Donald. He'd be so furious if he knew what I was about to do. It's in the bottom drawer. Pudge! Of course. With the heat sticking. to hurry. He might come back. He might have forgotten something. I can't get it open. Of course. It's locked. I wasn't taking any chances on the maid finding the clock. Oh, now the key. Where is the key? Where, where would the safest place be? <laughs> here in this little box. No, it isn't here. Now, let me think. Who is it? Donald, is that you? Oh. Uh, no, no one out there. Just my imagination. Donald thinks he's protecting me. Never seems to consider anyone but me. Skip can't take the blame. I've got to handle this myself. Where is that key? I, I, maybe this little box with his cufflinks. He is a key. Or if it's only the right one, if it fits. Oh, thank heaven. Here it is. It's under his shirt. Lovely little silver clock. How odd. I can hold you in my hands. And it's not the same. The ugly spell is broken. Mad, unreasoning impulse ever compel me to take this clock off that wedding gift table. How could I have been so childish and, and foolish as to think this clock and all its sentiment and loving memories for the Dennis family could ever take away that hideous emptiness and loneliness I felt that day? It never, never could. Poor Max. He thinks he loves me. Fancy, too. Will be. He finds out the truth. The kind of person I really am. Oh, dear God. Please let me have Randy Hamilton's help. Please make it possible for me to return this clock somehow. Help me to find a way to undo all the unhappiness I've created. Tell me what I should do to make up for the terrible thing I have done. As Lydia offers up a fervent prayer for guidance... She takes the silver clock from the dresser drawer, carefully closing it and replacing the key. Holding the clock, she moves back into the living room and onto her own room where she will put it away safely. She must try to be patient and wait until she is able to reach Dr. Randy Hamilton, who, though he knows nothing about her involvement with the clock, has already promised to help her if she should ever come to him. Listen again tomorrow to The Brighter Day. Transcribed, same time, same station. This is the CBS Radio Network.